Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to use multiple confirmations to be a successful profitable trader. And if you don't use multiple confirmations yet, this video is going to give you the full breakdown on how to use multiple time frames, combine them together, and increase your win rates. That way you can take higher probability A plus setups only. If you're new here, I post educational content on trading futures. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. I've been trading for just over three years, almost four years now. So if without further ado, we're going to dive in the chart, but just hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it and subscribe for more videos just like this. Okay, so the purpose of this video is just to share a way that you can increase your win rate and only focus on taking the highest probability setups that win the most often and hit your risk reward ratio. So to do that, we're going to combine time frames. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to the daily chart first. Okay, so we're going to look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. We're starting the daily chart because you want to see the overall direction. This is how we're going to use multiple confirmations because we're combining multiple time frames to paint a picture and decide which direction we should be taking the trades. So if you can see, we have been chopping up, chopping up, chopping up, chopping up, and then getting a little weakness here. Uh, we didn't go bearish until we broke this low, right? And that, was, that wasn't even until Monday. So once we broke this low on Monday, then we could say, okay, we're now going to only look for shorts after this closed Monday, but we only want to take shorts if we go up into a resistance. This is what's automatically already increasing our odds and our probabilities of being correct and making money in the market. So after we decided that, then we go to that lower time frame and then we mark out some some levels on the, the four hour or the one hour. So what we'll do is we'll go to the one hour chart now. We'll start it today pre-market. So today pre-market, if we go ahead and take a look, we were at 17,909. Right, but what we need to do is we need to identify where are the resistance levels. So, most clear and obvious one is at uh, eighteen thousand. You can even call it, yeah, eighteen thousand. Why? Because there's a ton of one touches in the one hour. So if we trade up into eighteen thousand and showed some sort of reversal, we could use that as a resistance. Uh, levels of support, which can turn into resistance. This is an important level at eight fifty. Lots of touches and rejections there. But we can go down a bit to about eight hundred and thirty. So see one touch here, one touch here, one touch here, one touch here, and then another touch here when we pull back, another touch here, another touch here, another touch here, another touch here. So after all those touches, you can say, okay, this is clearly a good support. So we would we would label this green. Uh, and then on the downside, one more would be down here because we have touch, touch, almost touch, touch, touch into resistance, broke, almost touch there, almost touch there, almost touch there. So in this general vicinity, these are two really good levels, right? So if we, you know, there's support levels and then if we break them, they can turn into resistance levels. So now that we know this and we know that we want to be short, all we're going to do is say, okay, if we come up into this level here and show a, you know, a lower high, lower high, like a low, like a rejection, then we can short it back down to the next level. Or if we break this level at 830 uh, and then come back into it, like a break and retest, then we can short it down to the next level because we're bearish now, right? So we're seeking lower lows on the higher time frames, and we're going to use that, you know, in our in our favor. So I trade on the five minute chart, and we'll just go down to we'll just get the market open here, nine thirty, almost nine thirty, nine thirty. Okay, we open up, and you can see on the five minute, um, there is some resistance here, right? And we yeah, some resistance, but we're just going to use one hour levels today. Um, I, I use one hour levels more than I use anything else anyways. So let's go ahead. Okay, so we're already dumping, right? We could have taken the trade already, but we're going to, for this sake of this strategy, we're only going to be taking the trades once we see us touch a level and uh, reject off of it. So we're coming down to support level. We hit the support level. We see what happens. Uh, stays there for a bit. Uh, breaks through, okay, but closes still over. Uh, holds, holds the level, and then breaks. Nope, still holds. Right, holds. So if we were bullish on the daily, if the daily chart was bullish, this would be a long. But the reason why it's not is because uh, we're bearish on the daily chart, so we could just be seeking lower lows. And that's what we actually did. So this is a high volume break of a level. Um, I You can take these trades, but when it breaks by that much, I don't really like to. I like to take the retest. So yeah, so the next candle comes up. So basically, we've broken a level, right? 
Now, if we trade and we kind of we consolidated before we broke. So this is even better. So we consolidated and we, we potentially just made another resistance at this important key level. So if we trade it up into this level and then showed another lower high bearish engulfing, we would take a short and target the next level. Because like I said, we set up all these levels, but we're bearish on the higher time frames, which means we're seeking lower, lower lows. So if we're seeking lower lows and we're trading up to a high and we show that we're rolling over, you just ask yourself the question, where are we likely to go to the next lower low level? And uh, let's see what happens. So we trade up, right? Comes up, uh, gets rejected at the level, but we want to bearish engulfing. Boom, bearish engulfing. So we can take the short right here. I know this looks sketchy, um, but there's two things you can do now. You can put the stop above these highs and then you can target the next level. So that's a two to one right there. Um, or you can put the stop just above the entry candle, which is what I do for a lot of times. Uh, and yeah, you do get stopped out, it is super annoying. Um, or I put it just on the other side of the level. So yeah, if usually I like my stops to be about 30 points, you know, 20 to 30, 35 points. So in this case, I would basically put it at like 35 points because I would put it, it's over this high. Uh, it's into some resistance, it's also on the other side of the level. So this would be my stop and this would be my target. So it basically becomes a three to one. Uh, and then I move my stops after about uh, plus 30 points. I move it to break even, I take a partial, I move it to break even after. So we'll see. All right, so did we go 30 points from 800? Oh, so we're up 30 points. So our stop is now break even and we've taken a partial. Okay, so we've taken a partial stop break even. And there it goes. See if we get stopped at a break even. No, hits TP. All right, 100 points, uh, three to one risk or ratio and you know, it went lower level to level. And reason why is because what I explained. So we used multiple confirmations. We started on the daily chart and we listed out, okay, are we, what's the direction? What's the bias? The bias was to the downside. Okay, let's only focus on the short when we hit a resistance. We made our levels, right? We drew out our support levels and our resistance levels, but every support becomes a resistance once we trade below. And if, we, if we're trading below a support, it be, now becomes a resistance if we come back up to it because it's an important level. We're just listing out levels where there's been a lot of, a lot of change in direction at. So uh, you basically rinse and repeat this, and um, you can refine this to say, okay, I'm only going to, I'm also only going to take this this trade if it if it's between 9:30 and 12, uh, and this one was at 11:15, and that's when I trade. I trade 9:30 to 12, a uh, hundred point trade, done for the done for the week. You could be even because hundred points a week is two thousand. So with one contract, so you make 2,000 a week on one contract. If you have 10 prop firm accounts, that's 20,000 per week with one trade, one contract. Um, so yeah, you could be done for the week, right? This could be your main key setup. Um, and you could get stopped out a few times, but you're, you know, this was a three to one risk or ratio. I'm not saying it's gonna happen every time and it won't go level to level every time, but that's why we take a partial at 30 points then move the stop to break even. And it will go 30 points a lot of the times. So you will get that one to one and then move stop to break even probably get stopped out on the rest happens to me all the time. But this is what I'm uh, working on holding more for because you know, I usually take m too much off at 30 points, but I want to get to the point now where I leave most of it on for the level to level uh, on the downside or the level to level to the upside. And you know, that's that's what I'm working on now as a trader. It's, it's a lot hard to hold for me personally for you know, for 100 points, these big targets with a lot still in the trade. Um, like I said, after 30 points, I usually take more than half off. I take, let's say 75% off and I just have like runners. And um, you know, sometimes it'll go hundred points, but yeah, I'm working on uh, holding my winners longer. That's that's what I'm working on. So I hope you now understand how to use multiple confirmations to increase your win rate and also increase your risk or ratio. And this is gonna allow you to only take those A plus setups that get you the best results. So that way you're, you're not taking those C trades that are a one-to-one -one or the, you know, the win rate's only like 60%. You know, this is how you increase your odds. Uh, you'll take a lot less trades this way though, because like I said, you, and you miss out on a lot of trades, you'll feel like you miss out because if you're focusing on the shorts only, there'll be some days where it just, you know, rips up all day and you watch it rip up all day and you say, well, it's not with my bias, so it's not with the trade. But that's why this, that's why trading is all about discipline, right? The more disciplined you can be, the more you stick to your rules, the more you stick to your trading plan, the more profitable you're gonna be and you won't be wasting a bunch of time or spinning your wheels or taking unnecessary losses, taking these poor setups. So hit that thumbs up button if you appreciated it. Let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see more of. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.